Hello everyone. In the continuity of our NCRT revision, I am now taking chapter from our NCRT 12 standard, namely transport and communication. I will be focusing more on transportation network. It is quite interesting for me to talk about before I start with this particular chapter. Uh, in the last video, I talked about Amphan, the super cyclonic circulation that uh, made a landfall in West Bengal, neighboring Odisha and also Bangladesh. And today we are having Nisarg. After 129 years, we are now likely to have landfall of this tropical cyclone in the coast of Maharashtra and neighboring Goa. A very basic fact that goes with tropical cyclone and I have already uploaded several videos on tropical cyclone, entire Konkan coast, and I'm saying coast, I'm not saying plain, entire Konkan coast precisely is not prone to tropical cyclone. It is largely related to the sea surface temperature and also the modification in the atmospheric circulation that makes this unique phenomena to take place in Maharashtra. So if the landfall takes place as it has been applied by afternoon today, it is surely going to be one of the significant aspect for us to analyze and orient or integrate it in our revision for prelims examination and also the modification that we can take as example while attempting the answer writing to tropical cyclone. Because everything that is changing is important for us to integrate in the conventional part of the study. So not talking about tropical cyclone in this video, of course just a mention of Nisarg, very important and very unique altogether. Concentrating on human geography, we'll be talking about transport network, global perspective, and it is something that has to be integrated again with dynamic components. So not just what is there in NCRT, not just what is actually existing, but also what are the proposed important transportation routes and what kind of significance they hold in terms of not just economic perspective, but also from geopolitical ground. We are trying to take the understanding of each one of them in our revision of NCRT. So let's get going towards NCRT study. So we begin with our chapter entitled Transport and Communication. As I said, I'll be focusing more on transport. Very elementary thing, precisely all of us are aware of it, that when we talk about transport as a service or facility for the carriage of persons and goods from one place to the other, using humans, animals, and different kinds of vehicles. Whenever we talk about transportation network, we just need to understand complementarity. Whenever we talk about complementarity, we take reference of that I don't produce every good and service that I require as a person, as a region, as a country. And I need to be dependent on the other person, region, and country for the supplies of goods and services that I demand as an individual or as a country or as a region. And it is therefore that the transportation network becomes important. Whenever we take the movement of such, I have got transportation as organized service industry created to satisfy the basic needs of society. And when we take the references of transportation network, what we need to add to our account is modes of transportation. And whenever we talk about modes of transportation, what we need to understand is we have surface means of transportation, water means of transportation, and also air means of transportation. Surface, we can include roadways, railways, and we also have mention of pipeline in NCRT. Waterways largely goes with trade routes. I'm talking about sea routes. And it also includes certain important inland waterways, which I have been talking about in the other videos of continent study. And also we have got airways. Among these modes of transportation, when it comes to the cost competitiveness, it is always waterways that continues to have its dominating influence in the global trade. And that is the reason we talk about water as the dominant means in the global perspective. However, yes, every means of transportation has got its important references. 
Now, if I have to read from NCRT further, modes of transportation is used for inter-regional and intra-regional transport. The significance of the mode depends on the type of goods and services to be transported, cost of transport and the mode available. International movements of goods is handled by ocean freight carriers. Reason, water means of transport continues to be the cheapest means of transport. Next statement reads, road transport is cheaper and faster for short distances. And the third statement reads, railways are more suited for large volumes of bulky material over long distance within the country. So whenever we talk about global perspective, we are essentially talking about the transportation network that is waterways. However, whenever we are learning about transportation, we cannot be ignorant about other modes as well. So we are taking each mode of transportation one by one as the base of our study remains NCRT. So our the first means of transportation highlighted in NCRT is land transport and we want to first see what land transport is giving us from the NCRTs. Surface transport, we are talking about roadways as our category A. Road transport is the most economical for the short distance compared to railway. Freight transport by road is gaining importance because it offers door-to-door -door services. Actually, there is no exaggeration in saying that among the two significant surface transportation, roadways and railways, they have got more complementary status to each other because railways will not be giving us door-to-door -door movement. Then the statement refers, but the unmetalled roads, though simple in construction, are not effective and serviceable in all the seasons. And it is therefore that metalled one are seriously handicapped during heavy rains and flood. So when we talk about unmetalled roads and metalled roads and compare them, so unmetalled roads are difficult for our all weather connectivity. Even when we talk about metal roads, they create handicapped during the rain and floods. In such conditions, the high embankments of the rail track and the efficient maintenance of rail transport service is an effective solution. So that is the reason I'm saying it's about complementarity. If I just go by one is to one, I'll say roadways is more important means of transportation for short distance travel, international travel, door to door services, but it do provide challenges where railways can come for our rescue. Then it reads the quality of roads varies greatly between developed and developing countries because the road construction and maintenance requires heavy expenditure. And it is therefore that when we talk about road sector, we have got maximum density of road sector in developed world. It, it is very easily referred in this paragraph. The world's total motorable road length is only about 15 million kilometers. We can easily take the updation and modification of such data. They are very dynamic, of which North America accounts for 33 percent. Highest road density and highest number of vehicles are registered in this continent compared to Western Europe. So when we talk about roadways, roadways is best means of transportation for short distance. It has two defined categories as unmetallic and metallic. It do have a complementary status with railways. And even today we have got developed world that has got highest concentration of roadways as per our NCRT. Now road sector includes a category called highways. Highways are metal road connecting distant places. Highways can be international and highways can be international. Among the prominent examples of existing as well as planned at variable levels of planning, implementation and acquisition, we have got certain examples. Let us see that before we proceed further with our NCR. The Trans-Canadian Highway that extends from Pacific Ocean Coast to Atlantic Ocean Coast. St. John's, you can recognize this island. We have talked about it in our earlier video. This is Newfoundland Island.
and we can notice Vancouver, Vancouver as an island, this is Vancouver, the island, we are not talking about that, we are talking about Vancouver, that is the port city in the Pacific Coast mainland. So from Vancouver to St. John, and you can notice all the major cities incorporate its link with this Trans-Canadian Highway. So I've already said Vancouver on west coast. It's Winnipeg, Winnipeg which is considered to be the grain port of Canada, very important mega city. Then I can easily take reference of uh, Ottawa, Montreal, significant centers interlinked by this existing transcontinental roadway. And why we are calling it transcontinental in spite of the fact that it is international as it is connecting the two coasts either side. We are talking about Pacific and Atlantic link. So existing example. Roadways do provide possibility of linking distant places as well. If I ask you to see this, the Alaskan Highway, the unofficial route and the original route. Unofficial route which is yet to be demarcated as part and parcel of Pan-American Highway. So it is basically existing plus some part that has been planned. Now when I talk about Pan-American Highway, I am talking about intercontinental highway and I actually ask you to see it one by one. The zooming in part here, from in Alaska, from Prudhoe Bay via Fairbanks to Edmonton in Canada, I can notice this green patch which is actually existing Alaskan highway. And all these links, Edmonton, I am reaching Minneapolis in United States of America. I am moving via Calgary to Billings. I have entered USA, Denver, San Antonio. These are unofficial, Dallas. Unofficial means these do incorporate their existence as national highway. But in Pan-American link, it has not been officially demarcated. And then when I continue to move via Mexico to South America, original route, I am moving from San Antonio, Mexico City, San Salvador, Panama, and then I have entered South America with some important centers as Lima, Entofogasta, very important, copper producing. We have got copper rail route also here. And then we have Valparaiso across Andes, Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is considered to be seaport on transatlantic route. Buenos Aires and Montevideo are the important seaports on Atlantic route, South Atlantic route. So the original route actually extends from Buenos Aires to San Antonio. And Alaskan Highway will be linked up with it. So whenever we talk about Pan-American Highway, we are talking about existing as well as planned. So we do have examples that can be applied as existing or planned because roadways do apply their significance in the transportation network. And I'll say geopolitically most ambitious kind of an attempt. We just noticed Fairbanks few minutes back and we all know New York City. Across Bering Strait, Geopolitically ambitious, don't miss to see the international date line. So via Alaska, Fairbanks, across Bering Strait, connecting Moscow and London, it is a Russian ambitious attempt that was originally planned in 2015 as interlinking 
transcontinental road link as a geopolitical attempt by Russia. Though it is at very minimal level of planning, but it gives us a futuristic purview that the highways do incorporate significant and we have got another category now very prominently used in India also, expressways are the potential substitute to the railways when it comes to construction cost, economic and geopolitical links. So these are and an very popular one compared to this, the very popular one goes with the Chinese you know, one belt, one road initiative. So if I take that one road initiative, we are talking about same expressways connectivity. So there are existing ones and there are other ones which are being planned and they are at variable level of implementation, but all of them makes important examples when it comes to roadways. I go to NCRT, then I'll be coming back here again. In North America, highway density is high. Cities located on Pacific coast, we have seen it, is well connected with those in Atlantic coast. Likewise in Canada, North is linked with those of Mexico in South. The Trans-Canadian Highway link Vancouver to St. John in Newfoundland. We have already seen it. The Alaskan Highway links Edmonton to Encove in Alaska. And we also have got fair banks that we noticed in our map. So first example that comes up with it. Now I take the second example, numbering them so that it becomes easier. We can go back to the image anytime, but first is this. The Pan American Highway, a large portion of which have been constructed, will connect the countries of South America, Central America, US and Canada. And we have seen that it is part and parcel of Alaskan Highway and it will be integrating South American Highway as well. Then example number three talks about the transcontinental Stuart Highway connecting Darwin and Melbourne via Tennant Creek and Ellis Spring in Australia. I'll be showing you this image from NCRT itself. So we have got transcontinental highways. In Russia, I'm numbering it as four. Dense highway network is developed in industrial region of west of Urals with Moscow as the hub. Moscow Vladivostok Highway serves the region to the east. See this image one more time. Vladivostok. Moscow to Vladivostok, right here. So when I say this trans-Siberian roadway, it is being proposed to connect with the rest of European as well as across Bering Strait to North American road network. So what is the length of the transcontinental uh, roadways in Russia? It's Moscow. Moscow, please take note of one of the earlier videos. Moscow is designated to be seaport of five water bodies. So I can easily count Moscow to be somewhere related to Atlantic Ocean here. And then we have Vladivostok on the shoreline of Sea of Japan. And Sea of Japan very clearly means marginal water body of Pacific Ocean. NCRT also mentions border roads. NCRT also mentions border roads. Roads laid along international boundaries are called border roads and of course they are important not just in integrating people in remote areas but also providing defense and other important inputs for the fortification of the border villages and the military camps. So if I have to quickly revise what we have taken into reference here, I'll say globally involved transcontinental characteristics. Important example is Canadian, Alaskan, Pan American, and Russian. There is one more category of road that we should not miss out, and that is border road. 
Road transportation is for short distance essentially yes and provides door to door movement is also important. But we when we talk about transcontinental and expressways or highways must not miss out that they do have their significance in the long distance travel as well. Railways part B, surface transport part B, railways. Railways are mode of land transport for bulky goods and passenger over long distance. Very important information, rail gauges. Gauges stands for the distance between the track laid. We all have seen rail track. So what exactly is the distance that I see between the two metallic parallel passage? So we have got categories that are broad gauge, standard gauge, meter gauge and smaller gauges. The standard gauge is used in UK. In our country we have got broad gauge, meter gauge and narrow gauge. So it's basically the distance that we have between the two tracks on which we are plying our rail route. Commuter trains are very popular in UK, USA, Japan and India. They carry millions of passengers daily. So railways are important when I compare it to roadways for the bulky commodity movement. Indian railway is essentially known for transporting big bulk of coal and heavy commodities. And as we have read just here, India is also included as example of the country where railways ferry essentially big, huge number of population. Now the examples coming from NCRT. Europe has one of the most dense rail network in world. Belgium has the highest density. The important rail heads are London, Paris, Brussels, Milan, Berlin and Warsaw. Logically, yes. The channel tunnel operated by Euro Tunnel Group through England connects London with Paris. Transcontinental rail lines have now lost their importance to quicker and more flexible transport service of airways and roadways. There, there are existing transcontinental rail route, but they are largely lost of their significance. Russia railways account for 90% of country's total transport. Moscow is the most important railhead. North America also has most extensive rail network accounting for nearly 40% of world total. The Canadian railways are in public sector distributed all over. Australia also has 40,000 kilometers of railway. 25% is found in New South Wales alone. In South America, the rail network is most dense in two regions, namely Pampas of Argentina and coffee growing region of Brazil. You know, whenever we talk about rail routes, we easily take the reference of rail routes are significant only in the areas where we have got availability of population consecutive settlements. That is the reason Australia, which is considered to be the country of great distances. We have got restricted availability of surface transportation means because maximum area is uninhabited. So there is no point creating the transportation network to it. All these examples are excellently proven with maps. I want you to see those maps before I get to the continent of Africa, which is mentioned the next. Trans Siberian Rail Route, Vladivostok, Chita. Novo Sibrisk, Yekaterinburg, Moscow, St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg means see here we have reached Gulf of Finland. Vladivostok I already said few minutes back you are in Sea of Japan. Original length of 9000 kilometers. It still continues to be the lengthiest transcontinental rail route. The attempt was to connect East resource rich but economic development deprived with West. West that essentially includes St. Petersburg, Moscow, Kazan. Yekaterinburg basically falls west of Ural. It is with Ural Mountains, slightly west of Urals. 
So that is the reason when I talk about West, it is more developed compared to East. So logic was to connect less developed East, resource rich East with economically developed West. And it continues to be a significant example of transcontinental railroad. Mentioned in our NCRT, map given in NCRT. Do compare it with your transcontinental road route. And now can you notice that I am again with Vancouver, but I am connect, connecting it to Halifax. This part is called Nova Scotia Peninsula. And we had St. John, that was the terminal of Canadian transcontinental rail route. And Winnipeg, which I said is grain port is included here. I can see Ottawa, Montreal involved here. Trans-Canadian Railway is another example of connecting central part with west. Vancouver is one of the mega seaport on Pacific route and east, which is economically more developed as Montreal, Quebec, Ottawa, important city. Queensland. Newfoundland, Victoria, Perth in West Australia, Sydney in Newfoundland, Kalgoorlie Gold, so from Sydney to Perth we have got the transcontinental rail route of Australia. It serves more of tourism purpose rather than economic connectivity because it is much more easier for us to travel via airways in this continent than going via rail route. The transcontinental railways run across the continent to link to ends. Trans-Siberian railway, remind yourself from where? The details is given, the Trans-Siberian Railway, the major rail route of Russia from St. Petersburg to Vladivostok. The Trans-Canadian Railway, 7050 kilometers. It is from Vancouver in Pacific Coast and it continues till Halifax. Halifax that I can see in uh, Vancouver in Pacific. And it continues with Winnipeg, Calgary, and it is still Halifax. Halifax, which is located in the coastal area of Nova Scotia Peninsula. Trans-Australian railways, we have seen it is from Perth on the western coast to Sydney on the eastern coast. Kalgoorlie, Broken Hill are the important cities that are located on it. NCRT also mentions Orient Express, but Orient Express have been terminated, it is no longer operational in terms of its transportation link. Now when it comes to railways, African continent despite of being second largest have least of the rail networking, but this least of the rail networking includes some of the important routes of the continent. Benguela Railway, Angola to Katanga, Zambia Copper Belt, Tanzania Railway, Zambian Copper Belt to Dar es Salaam in East Coast. Dar es Salaam is in Tanzania. It is considered to be a significant seaport on Suez Canal route. The railway through Botswana and Zimbabwe linking the landlocked state of South African network and the blue train from Cape Town to Pretoria, it is right there in Republic of South Africa. Let us see all of them. We are essentially talking about copper belt and blue train. And it has got a significant say of the geopolitical development also. See this map. Small countries like Burundi, Rwanda, not marked here. Carefully see, this entire belt, this entire belt is considered to be the Katanga Plateau belt, which is one of the significant rich location of copper. And we have got the Benguela rail, Benguela rail, which marks up its movement. Benguela is a small seaport in making immediate south of Lobito port. So Lobito port, if it's marked in this map, I can essentially mark Benguela right here. Benguela rail route is connecting Zambia, Zambia which has got a significant copper belt, 
Via Democratic Republic of Congo, which also includes Katanga Plateau, and seaport connectivity to Angola. And we have got Tazara Railway. Tazara Railway is connecting Zambia to Tanzania. Please see Dar es Salaam port. Bagomayo port is under construction right now in Chinese string of pearl. And Mombasa port of Kenya. Mombasa port of uh, Kenya is also significantly linked up with the Chinese aided transcontinental railway of this continent and it essentially correlates with copper, copper transportation from Zambia also neighboring Zimbabwe which is not marked here, I can demarcate it here but both the rail routes that we are learning Benguela and Tazara. They are two things that goes common with them. Number one, it's Chinese developed rail route. Number two, it is related to copper transportation to the coastal area. This is what is mentioned in our NCRT and NCRT also mentions. The blue train, which has got its route from Cape Town to Pretoria. Cape Town, Cape of Good Hope route. So it's a significant seaport and Pretoria we are aware of is the administrative capital of this country. The blue train, NCRT again, Ruvela rail route, the Tanzanian railway from Zambian copper belt to Dar es Salaam. Botswana, Zimbabwe linking landlocked state and the blue train and African. African we are essentially talking about two. Copper rail route and blue train. Copper rail route includes Benguela, Lobito, Dar es Salaam, Mombasa as important seaport, water transport. Greatest advantage of water transportation is that it does not require route construction. Oceans are linked to each other and are negotiable with ships of various size. The water transport is divided into ocean and inland waterways. We have got oceanic routes and which are the important ocean routes that we can take into reference or the Atlantic Sea route which connects Northeast USA and Northwestern Europe. Both of them are industrially developed region. It is therefore the busiest of the world and otherwise called the big trunk route. Mediterranean Sea and Indian Ocean route which connects highly industrialized Western European region with West Africa and Southeast Asia. Through the construction of Suez Canal, this route was connected Liverpool and Colombo, which is 6,400 kilometer longer than Suez Canal route. So Suez Canal automatically comes up with the Cape of Good Hope route. Before we read it, let us see the first two routes on the map. The Trans-Atlantic, London, Hamburg, are only few to name, connected to New York, New Orleans, Jacksonville, Montreal, all can be included here. So route number one is North Atlantic. Route number two is Europe via Mediterranean Suez Canal to Asia. So I have got Aden, I have got Suez, I have got London, Hamburg, I can keep on counting. We will have Athens here, we have got Milan here, we have got Barcelona here and then we have talked about Port Sudan, Karanchi, all the west sea ports of our country, Mumbai is visible here that goes with Suez Canal route. Right time to learn Suez Canal network from Port Said to Suez. 
built across isthmus of Suez, connecting Gulf of Suez to Mediterranean Sea is some 160 kilometers of artificial waterway constructed politically belonging to Egypt. Considered to be the second prominent trade route on the map of world. And what exactly it is comprised of before I take you there? Suez on Gulf of Suez, Port Said on Mediterranean Sea. And this peninsula, I have all talked about this already, Sinai Peninsula is thus detached from mainland of Africa. Suez, Great Bitter Lake, this is Little Bitter Lake, this is Lake Manzala, Oth Said. Suez Canal is at mean sea level and thus navigation is significantly easier. The Nai Peninsula, Africa, Egypt. From Gulf of Suez, Arabian Sea to Mediterranean Sea, Atlantic Ocean, Suez Canal, Red Sea, Arabian Sea, can connect Mombasa, Durban, be seen to be connecting Perth, Fremantle. Cape of Good Hope route is another important that crosses Atlantic which connects West Europe and East African countries with Brazil, Argentina and Europe. First route was this, the second route was this and the third route mentioned in our NCRT is this. So I am connecting Rio de Janeiro, Montevideo, Buenos Aires to Cape Town and then in the connectivity I can take them to Fremantle, Melbourne etc. So the route is connecting, third route is connecting eastern coast of South America to western coast of Africa and that to European countries. This route is called Trans-Pacific Route, Vancouver, Honolulu, Port of Call. Why the Trans-Pacific Route took time to be developed? Because being the largest ocean of the world, it was difficult for us to have the development of that big container of fuel. So Honolulu, which is in Hawaiian Island, provided for the refueling facility. So San Francisco, Honolulu to Yokohama, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Singapore. We can take the move there. The North Pacific route, the North Pacific route gives us the route of the west coast of North America to that of Asia. So we have seen Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles in American side, Yokohama, Kobe, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Manila, Singapore on eastern side. NCRT then mentions a shipping canal. We have already taken Suez Canal and then Panama Canal are the two important links. Suez Canal map I have already shown you. Let us see Panama Canal map first. Central American country, Panama. Panama that has got its extension between Pacific Ocean, that is Gulf of Panama. and Caribbean Sea that is Atlantic Ocean and we have got the canal which is from Cologne to Panama. So again Isthmus of Panama. From Panama City to Cologne. Lake Gatun and three locks. Reason is 12 to 25 meters above the mean sea level. So we have Mira Flores Lock, Pedro Mugal Lock, and Gatun Lock. And I want you to see this very cautiously here. If the Panama Canal route would not have been there, the distance between west and east coast of North America would have been increased to 13,000 nautical miles, which is now 5,000 nautical miles. Panama Canal route, Suez Canal route, shipping canals, Cape of Good Hope.
shipping canals, Suez, Panama. Is this sufficient information that I am getting from NCRT? We can certainly add few important things to it. Take note of this. In Asia, among Eurasia will be better expression, among the existing navigable routes that we have taken into account, the proposed Caspian Canal is very significant. This canal is going to link Caspian Sea with Persian Gulf and right here you will have Gulf of Oman via Iran. So it is going to be a significant Iranian geopolitical and economic significance. So Caspian Canal is the proposed canal that will be linking Caspian Sea via Iranian territory to Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. And what is the benefit that we will be having here? It is easily evident whenever such type of canal networking is developed, where do I gain? I essentially gain in terms of the development of navigable route, in terms of development of economic significance that can arise out of it. What else we can take into reference here is that this route is likely to create a addition to Don Volga shipping canal. Now Caspian Sea is already connected to Azov Sea via Don Volga shipping canal. And now if Caspian is getting connected right there to uh, either the Persian Gulf or Gulf of Oman, there will be a clear navigable route, Black Sea, Sea of Azov, Don Volga shipping canal, Caspian Sea and then we go back to the link that we have seen, Caspian Sea to Persian Gulf, it is proposed as of now and to Gulf of Oman. Added to it, the Circum Cape route, Strait of Malacca, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, important centers. We are now having the another second important proposed route, Trans Isthmus route. And what is this Isthmus called? It is called Isthmus of Kra. And this canal is also going to significantly add to the navigable route on the map of world. See this image, it will give you more clarity. Laya Peninsula, Indochina Peninsula, Isthmus of Kra, politically belonging to Thailand. It will be an alternative to Circum Pacific route, Trans Isthmus route, which we have highlighted already. 102 kilometers approximately, Kra Canal will be adding a new link to the Strait of Malacca route. It's a proposed route. Third and the final proposed shipping canal will be Nicaragua Canal and Nicaragua Canal will be extending from Pacific Ocean to Atlantic Ocean. So there will be Rito locks here via Lake Nicaragua to Punta Gorda where we'll have Camilio locks. Length will be some 273 kilometers. Mind it, Nicaragua Canal will be substitute to Panama Canal, proposed shipping canal. Nicaragua. Kra and Caspian. What we have learned? Road transport with expressways, rail transport with transcontinental rail route, waterways that are oceanic and shipping canal. Shipping canal existing is Suez and Panama, proposed is Nicaragua, Kra and Caspi. Inland waterways is also mentioned in our NCRT which includes river, canal, lake, coastal areas that have been utilized for navigability. The dependency of the navigability of this of course is on water flow and transport technology. Important examples mentioned in our NCRT is Rhine waterway. I have given you the complete networking of rivers and their waterways. I will just take you to that map. The Volga waterway, which comes on to uh, Europe, Asia, 
uh, in, in context of Russian territory, the Danube waterway. So Rhine waterways, Danube waterways absolutely in Europe, Volga waterways, Eurasia will be a better consideration, country wise it is in Russia and the Great Lake St. Lawrence waterway. Let me first take you to this image and then I will take you to the maps that I have already covered up in the earlier videos. River St. Lawrence, River St. Lawrence that moves towards Atlantic Ocean, the most prominent river in Canada. The Great Lakes that includes Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. We have River Mississippi right here and Missouri is being shown here. River Columbia, River Colorado, Rio Grande that draws international boundary between Mexico and United States of America. All these correlates with the important networking of inland waterways. So I have got tributary Ohio River. This is Mississippi River. So Mississippi network is the most important. And what is the networking of inland waterways here, which includes St. Lawrence, which includes Great Lake and the other river system. Superior and Huron name of the canal is Sioux Canal. I have given you this video already earlier. Huron to Erie, name of the canal is Detroit Canal. Erie to Ontario, name of the canal is Wellland Canal that has got seven locks because Erie and Ontario lakes have Niagara Falls to it. Then can we easily notice the river network? We have been given names here. This is river Mississippi and right here is my river Missouri. So Missouri, Mississippi waterway. It has got its mouth in Gulf of Mexico. This is my Ohio river tributary. This is my St. Lawrence river. River Columbia. So we have got the network of the tributaries that makes the waterways, inland waterways. In this map we can see this and we will go to the other maps to notice the other ones which are mentioned in our NCRT. I have already talked about them earlier. River Rhine. River Danube, canal that is called Ludwig, River Rhone, the canal that is called Rhine Rhone Canal. River Volga, Don Volga Shipping Canal, River Ems, Weser, Elbe, Middle Land Canal. Dortmund Canal. It basically facilitates the navigation throughout. This is my river, Gerone. And this is my Dumedi Canal. Every river system has got its interlink with each other. This is how the European map is being taken. And we have already said Caspian is marking its move via Iran towards south. Here we have got Corinth Canal. Here we have got Kiel Canal. I have talked about all this earlier. So when it is shipping canal, 
I have got shipping canal that is not just confined to North America, it is also applied to Europe. Cost of transportation is decreased. And that is the reason inland waterways always makes a complementary edge to shipping canal and oceanic route. The Rhine waterways, Volga waterway, Great Lake and St. Lawrence Seaway and Danube waterway. Danube the longest river of Europe. I hope this will help you in revising and maintaining the factual part that is correlated with this chapter. Waterways very important, we also have got roadways and railways, always integrated with map because with map the things become easier for us to learn and study. Happy learning to all of you, all the very best.